Ever since the British arrived in Somalia, they faced fierce resistance from Somali tribes and religious groups. The British colonized Somalia in 1884 and aimed to gain control of key ports in order to have easy access to the strategic port of Aden in Yemen. Britain wanted to use the northern Somali coast as a supplier of meat and other commodities for its Yemeni garrison, which was considered vital to the defense of British India. The coastal region and its immediate vicinity was controlled by the Ogaden and Herti Somali tribes, both of whom had repeatedly proved to be difficult to administer and were openly hostile to British rule. For example, in February 1893, the British administrator of Kismayu was nearly killed during an altercation while mediating a dispute between these two Somali tribes. Later in August of the same year, Somalis succeeded in seizing and destroying a British garrison near Kismayu, killing 30 British soldiers and Superintendent W.G. Hamilton, who died after he was shot in the heart. Shortly after the Italians and British occupied Somalia, they began to centralize the economy. This had a negative impact on Somalis because they had historically been nomadic people who rely on livestock for survival. The lack of consistent rainfall and vegetation in Somalia required mobility in order for survival. Growing crops and being tied to a particular plot of land was not an option for most Somalis. Such economic problems increased discontent and hatred towards the British. By the year 1899, resistance to the British rule in Somalia was no longer confined to a few coastal tribes. In 1899, the religious leader Muhammad Abdullah Hassan who was part of the Salihiyya Sufi order, called on all Somalis to wage jihad against the British. After returning from his pilgrimage to Mecca, Abdullah Hassan began recruiting followers for his anti-British movement. Within two years, he managed to recruit thousands of youths from various different Somali tribes. His movement was known as the Dervish movement. The main motivation of Muhammad Abdullah Hassan was religion. In a speech to his followers, he stated the following. Unbelievers have invaded you in your country to corrupt you and to corrupt your religion and to force you to believe their own religion. This, along with various economic problems, such as the problem of decreasing livestock, caused many to join his movement. The dervishes began to gain significant victories against the British. Their greatest victory was in the Battle of Jidali in 1913. In this battle, the British commander Richard Corfield was killed. However, Abdullah Hassan's religious extremism meant that he was hostile to other groups of Muslims in Somalia. It was not long before he declared many other Somalis as non-Muslims and declared a jihad on them. Any Somali who opposed them was declared a non-Muslim and their property was seized and in some cases their wives and children were killed and mutilated. This increased hatred towards Hassan and his movement. In 
and increased support for the British. Eventually, because of his violence against Somalis, Abdullah Hassan began to lose support and various religious leaders and tribal chiefs urged their followers to stop support for his jihad. Many Somali religious leaders took up arms against the dervish movement of Muhammad Abdullah Hassan. For example, Ismail Mire fought many battles against Hassan and gained significant victories. Another prominent Somali Islamic scholar known as Uwais al Barawi also openly declared his opposition to Muhammad Abdullah Hassan. Uwais al Barawi accused Hassan of being a power hungry womanizer and referred to his movement as the sect of dogs. Abdullah Hassan's dervish movement was finally defeated when the British mobilized their force after the end of World War I. With the help of the British, the Somali tribes were able to defeat and put an end to the extremist dervish movement. In the next few decades that followed, the British and the Italians continued to fight over control over Somalia. In the midst of all this chaos, Somali revolutionaries and intellectuals regrouped and formed the Somali Youth League, which was the first political party of Somalia. Unlike previous resistance movements, this was a more united movement, which was free from tribal tensions and religious extremism. In fact, the Somali Youth League had a strict no-clan affiliation policy. For example, the Somali Youth League required its members to identify themselves by their Somali nationality and not by their clan or tribal allegiance. This helped to create a more unified independence movement. British control of Somalia ended in November 1949, when the area became a UN trust territory. Somali nationalists in Italian Somalia won assurances of independence in a decade. These assurances in turn inspired Somalis in the British protectorate to press for independence and unity with Italian Somalia. Finally, the two areas were granted independence and on July the 1st 1960 they merged to form the Somali Republic.